Live well, win well. It's on point with Wandel and Stoke. Let's talk health and wealth, politics and fashion, love and life, any and everything you need to know to make you live well and win well. Tune in now to On Point with Wandel and Stokes. How are you doing? I am blessed as I could be, and you are blessing me even more. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. I want to talk to you a little bit, and I certainly want to welcome you uh, to our conversation today. Uh, it is on point with Wandel and Stokes, and certainly we're always blessed by Brother West, as many of you may affectionately know him as Dr. Cornell West. And of course, he's a professor of philosophy and Christian practice at Union Theological Seminary, and he's doing a whole lot. But talk to us about the the your 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 first initial uh, desire or thought process to run for president uh, of the United States. Tell us about that. Oh, Lord, Lord, before I do, I just want to salute you. I want to just thank you for your witness, your work, your ministry, that your anointment is undeniable, and the power of your voice and your soul and your spirit affects so wow. many of us. And I'm telling you, I know you're straight out of Savannah. And I know you I come sure out, am. Oh, yeah, you come out of Deacon Thomas and Elder Helen. <laughs> and you, you got that fire inside of you. And I was listening uh, listen to the other night. Was it at the Clark Tribute? Yes, that was me. That was you, wasn't it? Yes, it was, sir. Oh, no, that was the spirit now. That was the real <laughs> thing. That was the spirit. That's an anointing, but everybody ain't got that. I can tell you that right. So I just wanted to start off on that note because. Wow. Me, Thank very, you, Dr. Very, West. Thank very, you. I'm honored. Very much so, because really the answer to your question has so much to do with, with, with calling and vocation. You see, I've been running for justice for 60 years, and I've been running for Jesus for 66, no, 63 years. And the same calling, be it in the classroom, be it on the street, in the, in the cell, going to jail. I've taught in prison for 51 years as well. Be it in the community hall, be it in the church, my Muslim brothers and sisters invite me to the mosque because I'm a Jesus-loving free black man. I go anywhere and take Jesus yeah. with me. Oh, them, well, I, I go to the nightclubs, too, because I'm hanging loose Baptist. You know what I mean? So yes. I, oh, yeah. <laughs> I take Jesus everywhere. Nightclub, too. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, Lord, yeah, Maxwell is there. The spirit of Curtis Mayfield. The Erica Badu shows up. I'm going to, I'm gonna be there. Just like That's Bishop right. Stokes. Bishop Stokes is going to be preaching. I'm going to be there if I can. <laughs> <laughs> but I say all that to say is that electoral politics is just one context of many. And when you have a certain call and they try to tell the truth and seek justice, do not be afraid to be willing to be in the world but not of the world, to cut against the grain and recognize that the kingdom of God is never identical in any kingdom of the world. And therefore you're freed up and you have a certain kind of courage. And so when I when I looked around and, and said to myself, good God Almighty, this country is shot through with so much spiritual decay and moral decadence. We got one of almost 40% of them, black children living in poverty. You got a million folk who are homeless. You got poverty levels that are escalating and nobody's really talking about it in politics. Yeah. See, because politics tied to big money. That's right. You're right. Wall mm -hmm. Street, Silicon Valley, big tech, and so forth. And what about everyday people? See, I come out of 25th chapter, Matthew. But what you do unto me, you do unto the least of these. So you start with the fatherless, the motherless, the orphan, the widow, the poor, the subjugated, and so forth. And then I come out of Shallow Baptist Church, which means, of course, that I begin on the chocolate side of town. Okay, okay. I'm very unapologetic about that. I learned how to love from Irene West, Clifton West, Willie P. Cook, Deacon wow. Henry, Sarah Ray, my vacation Bible school teacher. Now, my love spills over to vanilla sides and everywhere else in the world, but it starts yeah. on the chocolate side. And I didn't see anybody in the, um, in, in, in the presidential race really highlighting the plight of poor people and the plight of Black people those who were mass incarcerated, those who are dealing with the dilap dilapidated housing, decrepit school systems with the guns and the drugs coming in, all of that 
is pushed to the side and it's all about stock market. It's all about people telling us we live in the most excellent economy. Have they looked in the communities and seen the lives that people are living? How can they call that an excellent economy? Well, the statistics tell us, don't tell me about statistics. That's if right. Jamal and Letitia are still dealing with levels of social misery, something is wrong here. Yeah, and of course, yeah. It's wealth inequality. We got 1% of the population on 90% of the wealth. Three individuals have wealth equivalent to 160 million citizens. 50% of the population in America have wealth equivalent to three people. Wow. You wow, those I mean? numbers are not right. Those That's numbers a, are not right. I call that a key sweat moment. Something, something just ain't right. <laughs> <laughs> You're so right, Dr. West. Is it that uh, the players that be have not found a way to profit from uh, you know, from poor people, from those that are incarcerated? Have they not found a way? And that's why it's of no concern to those that are running and in leadership? I think you got right to the core of it, that uh, it's, it's, it's big money that really shapes and molds the destiny of the country. You saw it recently with uh, Brother Biden, you know, that uh, people were putting pressure on him to leave. It was when the donors called up and said, you're not going to get a penny. Yeah, we already gave you hundreds of millions. You're not gonna get one more penny. He had no mm -hmm. choice. But when big money talks, and see what happens is that we, this is what I mean by spiritual decadence. Really, is that uh, when you view life as a gold rush, you end up worshiping the golden calf, and wow. the golden rule becomes he who has the gold rules. Well, see, that's so much of the country. So everybody's for sale. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, I mean, everybody. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. when everybody's for sale, it means that people know the price of everything, but don't know the value of anything. Wow. That's good. That's good. So then there's no focus really then, Dr. West, on the expansion of uh, affordable housing. That's right. Or quality education or even Medicare for everybody. Or yeah. safe communities for everybody. There's safe communities somewhere, but it's on mm -hmm. one side of town. That's right. Yeah. You're right. You're right. It's like mm -hmm. we were just talking about Sister Sonia, because this is what wonderful DJ Ms. Eclectic. You know, she 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 she, she she's a wonderful uh, person. Yes, she is. She yes. really is. Straight out of Texas. She's the best of Texas. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, she is. And we is. were just talking, we were just talking about that with Sister Sonia, you see. When you got police on one side of town that's protecting and serving and being nice, and on the other side of town too often is repressing and gauging in excessive trigger happy police, and as Marvin Gaye put it, what's going on? Yeah, it's yeah. double standards too often, you see. And the problem is, is that when you have folk who are supposed to be concerned with those on the chocolate side of town, too often they are up for sale. Right, that's right, yeah. Too often they are up for sale. And you see, and you notice even in our churches, you see that. Yes, the growing, same thing, it plays out the same way. Absolutely, if you're there with market religion and the blood at the cross, the transformed into the Kool-Aid, that thin stuff, you just want to dip in and get your blessing rather than be washed in the thick blood to have your life turned upside down so you are a new being in Christ learning how to die every day to emerge with a power. Hey, you can see the shift. And when yes. everything is for sale, then the politicians are for sale. The preachers are for sale. The lawyers are for sale. The doctors are for sale. And you say, oh, my God, I'm not even a great uh, Manuel Scott Sr., he's one of the greatest uh, preachers uh, out of Texas. Yes. He, he used to preach this sermon on the uh, riches in Christ because it's deeper life in Christ. Oh, <laughs> oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. I he hear you. I hear you. And it's big now. He used to preach a sermon called the rich, the, the rich in Christ. And he used to say, I want people to go home and write on a piece of paper all the things that most valuable in your life that money can't buy. Hmm. Then you find out how rich you are. Yes, 
Yes. Then you find out how rich you are. Yes. The love of yes. your mom, the memory of your grandma, the sparkle in the eye of your child, the yes. quality of your friendship, the touching of the soul of the music. It could be Walter Hawkins or it could be Luther Vandross. We ain't got to Aretha yet. <laughs> See, those are things that go beyond money. That's right. And those That's are the right. things that in the end really matter. And mm -hmm. that's why the kingdom of God is never reducible to the kingdom of this world. It's like the third temptation in the fourth chapter of Matthew. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That that's right. Jesus out. So, <laughs> take hold of everything, everything. Just worship me. Nope, I won't do it. Get that mm. golden calf out of the way. I yes. worship a God spirit that allows me fortitude, armor, allows me to climb the mountain with the strengths that I'm given, not remove the mountain as if somehow my life is just going to be a push button, feel good affair. No, not at all. And you see, we come from a great black people at our best who understood that. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. went through slavery for 244 years and another 100 years of neo fled slavery and Jim and Jane Crow and American terrorism and lynching. You're going to have to get your spiritual armor intact. And that's, that's what so the, true. And, that's, and there's never been a people in the history of the world who've been hated the way we have. We talk the world so much about love. Mm -hmm. Love war, mm -hmm. terrorize, produce freedom fighters traumatized, produce wounded healers, That's overwhelmed it. sorrow, but here mm -hmm. comes the joy, a joy that the world didn't give you and the world can't take away. But you see, I, 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 I feel that in your ministry. I hear you. Yeah, you I know, hear I feel it. it in your ministry, though, Bishop. Ain't no yeah. doubt about that. <laughs> yes, it definitely is. You know, you, you, you mentioned something about a transformative yes. approach to everything. What, what is that in particular? I think it gets beyond the transactional. Okay. It gets beyond the transactional because what happens is, is that uh, probably the most, the major impediment of any politics, of any life, of any church is fear and the manipulation of fear because all of us have fears and anxieties and insecurities. But, um, what is it, 365 times in the biblical text says, be not afraid. Be yeah. not afraid. What breaks the back of fear, really? Ooh, love casts out fear. Yes. It breaks the back of fear. And you see, for Black folk, you see, we have been taught, this is white supremacist lies bombarding us for 400 years. We've been taught we're less beautiful, we're less intelligent, we're less yeah. moral. But then we were also taught you should be afraid, scared, intimidated. You should be deferential to our white supremacist authority. And so you end up with black people too often laughing when it ain't funny and scratching when it don't itch and having to wear the mask and move by fear rather than a deep love. That's what Martin King used to say. I'd rather be dead than afraid. Yeah, yeah, he sure did. Sure did. Mary Ellen Pleasant, our great black sister, who was a uh, godfather, godmother of human rights in California, she used to start every rally. She used to say, I'd rather be a corpse than a coward. Mm. God, God can't use cowards. Yeah, yeah, that's oh, good. Oh, no, you got to have courage. Yes. Be in, in courage and of great courage. Don't be discouraged because faith is a form of courage. Yes, yes. But your type of boldness and courage has intimidated and it, others and it has exposed what's not being done on behalf of every individual having divine worth and being recognized and being honored. So you have exposed a lot of this. Uh, what would you say the role is of the faith community and, and, and faith leaders even now? I think it's always to be a witness, uh, to be a witness of truth, and the condition of truth is to allow suffering to speak. So when Jesus says, I am the truth, that's the fleshification of truth. That's yeah. the word made flesh, meaning to be lived. It's not a proposition. It's not a sentence. It's not just something to talk about. It's something to be. It's something to live. 
truth, and then of course, hand in hand with that love. But that love goes hand in hand with a, with a freedom. So it's a radical freedom and love, a radical love in freedom. And the gospel is about how we can be freed up from our fears, insecurities, and anxieties to be forces for good for a kingdom that's trying to break in a cold and cruel world. Because most of the history of human beings, the history of organized greed, weaponized hatred, routinized indifference. Indifference is the one trait that makes the very angels weep. Indifference to evil is more insidious than evil itself. So yeah. we walk by folk who are catching hell and if we are indifferent, that's a sign that the Holy Ghost is not working inside of us the way in which it ought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Wow. Hey, Lucy, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. You can't have a... You can't have your light shining and be indifferent and callous to people who are suffering. That's to be there in Gaza with genocide taking place, Sudan, yeah. Congo, chocolate side of Atlanta, vanilla side of Stone Mountain, or the indigenous peoples in California. It's universal. It's human all the way down. But all of us start in our own context. And I start in the black context with mom and dad and 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 you know Glen Eldon, the neighborhood where I grew up in, you know, the <laughs> church. You yeah, 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 very much so. So if we settle in our own context, what what should be happening within the family, the core family now, as we're raising up younger generations? So how should that look in terms of parenting, in terms of raising and instilling values and building courage and confidence? How should that look today, Dr. West? Yeah, that's a, that's a beautiful question. You know, I, uh, I wrote a book in 1998, co-wrote a book called The War Against Parents. And our thesis was that parenting is the ultimate non-market activity in a market-driven culture. Because mm -hmm. in a market-driven culture, again, everything's about money and profit. Right. But anybody who decides to, that the parent knows you don't do that because you think you're going to make a profit. Parenting okay. is profit-making. You better get ready for some Frankie Beverly joy and pain. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you're going to have moments of ecstasy and bliss. You have moments where you're so down and out, you drop down on your knees and say, Lord, please, please send some power because I'm in deep trouble with my child. Yeah. That's what it is to parent. But it's a beautiful thing. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. beauty is always a combination of the joy and the pain. They go hand in hand like sunshine and rain, as Frankie did say. He's absolutely right. And so the question becomes then, well, what are conditions under which family and family love can flourish? Well, you see, again, good God almighty, if you have people in context where they're bombarded every day, television, film, and so forth, with just money, 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 spectacle, 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 and the celebrities become heroes rather than just entertainers, then your children are gonna have market orientations rather than orientations toward non-market things like love and justice and trust. Okay. And if you have levels of, what is it now? 140 million Americans are either poor or low income. Meaning what? 62% of all Americans live paycheck to paycheck. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You live paycheck to paycheck, with stress and strain on relationships in particular and families in general. That's true, yeah. And then if you're in communities where you feel unsafe or you feel that too many folk walk around with guns, too much drugs flowing, not enough positive spirit, then people become highly suspicious of the world and everybody else. Well, it's very difficult to, to allow for a, fl a flowering of compassion and community if mm. everybody's walking around suspicious of everybody that's a true. paranoid of everybody and and this is you know in, in in so many ways you know we're talking about the uh the decay of a whole empire we really are because america it's not just an idea 
but it's an empire. It has 800 military units around the world, 130 special operations in over 100 countries, 62 cents for every $1 discretionary budget goes to the military. Yeah, yeah. Military. We go to war, we find trillions of dollars when it's time to fight poverty, trying to get quality school, trying to get quality Medicare, we can't find a penny. That's right. We don't want to go in debt. We don't want to go. You just spent trillions of dollars in Afghanistan. You just spent trillions of dollars in Iraq. Right now in, in Israel and Ukraine, we're spending billions and billions and billions of dollars. And you said, well, let's do away with the homeless. We could do away with the homeless with, with a matter of $45 billion overnight. No, no, no. That's low priority. Why is that a low priority? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our priority so warped. This is mm. quite it is, it really is. And that way, when, when you mention different issues, they don't really want to talk about it. Let's take uh environmental justice, for example. Ooh, That's yeah. one of the things, you know, that you know, some of the leaders they they really have no concern about us going green, being green, or anything like that. What are some of the key things in terms of environmental justice that are important to you that stick out? Well, God, I'm glad you raised that question. I know you all have been been hitting this issue over and over again. In fact, my dear brother Tavis Smiley just had a wonderful C-SPAN show on yeah. racial justice and environmental justice together. It is yeah. so bad, badly, badly needed because you got fossil fuel companies that are so obsessed with short-term profit that they can, can continually generate conditions in which the very globe could go under in a matter of decades. Yes. So it's just yes. short-term myopic short-sightedness mm. but that's a human thing because people oftentimes are just selfish they just narcissistic and they don't care about the long run you're but right companies like that you said oh my god but we saw it with tobacco companies before you know when they were lying about they knew the effect of cigarettes they just lying about it they just wanted their profit they just wanted their big money to be made so for more than anything else, we need to follow the anthem of Black people, which is lift every voice. We got to lift our voices. Wow, that's good. Put a spotlight on the suffering. But in a market culture, is lift every echo rather than mm. lift every voice. And okay. I think that the Johnson brothers didn't say lift every echo. Because the echo ain't nothing but an extension of a silo and a bubble. Go. But you got to find your voice. When you find your voice as a preacher, the way you do, as a bishop, as a singer, as a musician. Yes. It means you're no longer just imitating and emulating. You go to the dark corners of your own soul and wrestle with your own wounds and bruises and scars and transfigure it into a sound that is distinctly yours like your fingerprint. And it touches other folks' souls in such a way, it empowers them in such a way that you become a vessel and a conduit of something bigger and grander and more loving than you, namely an almighty God who can use crack vessels like us so we can love our crooked neighbor with our crooked hearts and be forces for good for a kingdom trying to break in. But it's not about the focus on being a, a focus of good. It's really what we're seeing is a focus of evil permeating uh, that's throughout that's the country, true. right? That's true. And, and that's <laughs> what we're fighting against. That's what we're fighting against. And of course, it's inside each and every one of us. You see, okay. when I talk about the greed, when I talk about hatred, when I talk about fear, that's a battle going on on the battlefield of my own soul, too. And I got to kill it. Every day, I tell folk all the time, I was a gangster for, I met Jesus and I ain't nothing but a redeemed sinner with gangster proclivities right now. Yeah, yeah. To be renewed over and over and over and over again. I need to die daily in order to bounce back with a new life and a new vision, almost like Jacob in the 32nd chapter of Genesis. I'm going to undergo a transformation even in name from Jacob to Israel. Israel means what? God wrestler with the wounds, with the new visions, with the new energy, but still recognizing, lo and behold, if I don't have some grace, if I don't have some power bigger than me, I can fall back. Mm -hmm. So 
Oh, yes. Wow. Fall back to my old self. I'll fall back to my gangster self. Mm -hmm. I'll fall mm -hmm. back to my fearful self. Where's my faith? Where's my freedom? Where's my courage? Well, every day it's a battle. Pray for them. Every day it's a struggle. Ensure that your prayers can help empower and enable me. That to me is a kind of uh, view of the world that has kept us going as a people. 400 years and it's tried and true it's tried at least for me it's tried and true because i got a testimony yeah I, yeah I, I, you I, certainly I, do absolutely there's no doubt about it how would you describe the state of our country right now i think that we're wrestling with levels of desperation frustration and too much of leadership is capitulation and the desperation is thinking how do we actually see a way out where's the quality of our leaders mm. and, and and the quality of a leader always has to do with what they see what they feel and what courage they're willing to exercise I and see. there's no doubt in my mind that you know the days of, uh, of martin luther king jr and fanny lou hamer and ella Baker and Satima Clark. So those are high moments. You know what I mean? Yeah. Those yeah. That's like Aretha Franklin and Curtis Mayfield and the Mighty Dells and Delphonics and the Dramatics. That's high standards. But when you look around these days, do you see the conglomeration of that kind of high, high quality? It's just not there. Yeah, yeah, it's not. And it's many not. are suffering as a result of it, Dr. That's West. True. That's exactly right, because we don't lift the voices, folk, the powers that be will try to crush. Now, there, there's, <laughs> there's figures like yourself and others who are holding up the bloodstained banner. There's always a cloud of witnesses of every generation. But we're just yeah. talking about the, the extent. You see, when you, when I was coming, I'm much older than you, when I was coming along, you see, and I looked around and saw, my God, there goes Huey Newton, there goes Angela David, there goes Stokely Carmichael, there goes Martin King, there goes Fannie Lou Hamer, there goes Ralph Abernathy. There, there were so many examples. Yes. You see what I mean? And even yes. in the music, we had Marvin Gaye, we had Aretha, we had Gil Scott Heron. Now we had, we had uh, uh, Rudy Ray Moore too. Rudy Ray Moore was doing his thing with Dolomite, but he was not at the center of, of our culture. Mm -hmm. so he was on That's the right. edge. These days, Dolomite talked about by Rudy Ray Moore. God bless him, because I love my brother. You know, he, he just yeah. don't need to be at the center of things, you know. I right, love right. But he don't need to be at the center of things. Let Curtis be at the center of it, you know. That's right. But but these days for young folk, what's at the center is the Rudy Ray Moores. And they make them heroes. They make them heroes. They sure do, say, yes. Hey, wait a minute. You got some folk over here, J. Cole and Eric about doing these other folk who got something to say. How come they push so far to the to the side? Well, it's the industry. It's not the black folk themselves. It's okay. the oligarchs in the recording industry who make decisions as to who gets what kind of contract, who gets what kind of visibility, and they don't want the love warriors and freedom fighters to be at the center. You're right. Oh, and my I, God. Oh, yeah. Curtis Mayfield was around today. He'd have to have his own label. Well, he did have his own label, Kurt Dunn with, with Donna Hathaway and, and Lira Hudson and others. But he'd have a difficult time gaining access because his genius and his love for Black people would make him marginal. That's right. Tupac, too. Yeah. I mean, there's Tupac so would be another great example. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly yeah. Right. No. Even my three albums that I made, and I was blessed to work with geniuses <laughs> like Bootsy Collins. You know, we wrote two songs together on his funk capital of the world and Raheem Devon, masterpiece. And so I've been blessed to work with some of the greatest musicians, especially Gerald LaVert, who I think is the greatest soul yes. singer of this generation, Glenn Jones and others. But when we would go from one label to the other, they would say, we don't want this political, spiritual crap. We want G-string songs. And see, these are the ones making the decisions. They sure are. Yeah. They're making they the sure decisions. 
They the ones that decide to bring you in, push your song, put you on tour. And you say, oh. Or take you out and create a Ooh. scandal around your name. Isn't that the truth, too? Yes. Uh, yes. Isn't that the truth, too? Yes, it is. Oh. Do Dr. West, before you leave, I, I do want you to uh, elaborate on the ways that we can use our voices. Is it just through voting or is it a combination of things? Uh, protesting, making a stand, taking the courage, all of those things that you mentioned beforehand. How are we to use our voice to try to make a difference and to eradicate a lot of the social ills that are happening in society? I've always felt that uh, bearing witness, just like love, is one and many at the same thing, at the same okay. time. It's one because it's a common denominator. You want integrity, honesty, decency, and consistency. See, yes. That's the love. Just like the vulnerability and the intimacy in private. That's why justice is what love looks like in public. Mm. Tenderness is what love feels like in private. I see. Because both of them require integrity, honesty, decency, and consistency. And you know better than I, kenosis coming out of that's right. <laughs> Empty yourself. Yeah. Give of yourself. Sacrifice yourself. That's the common denominator. But the many it has to do with raising your voices in a variety of different ways. You raise your voice in church, in the barbershop, in the beauty salon. You can raise your church voice on television, on radio. Yes. You could raise your voice in the voting booth. You could raise your voice on the corner talking to the precious brothers and sisters and Jamal and Leticia in conversation. You can raise your voice talking to the precious homeless brother or sister who's just like you and just like me, but by the grace of God, go I, who've been through hell and high water and God looks on them with the same value as God looks on you and try to connect with their humanity. There's so many different ways in which one raises and voting is simply one, but even voting has to be rooted in integrity, honesty, decency. So much of politics these That's days. That's right. It's about lies and lies <laughs> and lies. Oh my God, Jesus Christ. Ooh, we, I mean, you got Trump. Trump just lying every second. Then he had to go talk about Biden like he liked George Washington. I say if Biden was a black brother, he'd be a retired car salesman still in Scranton, Pennsylvania. <laughs> way, male mediocrity, but he able to make his way, but he sure he could do some decent things. There ain't no doubt about it. But quit lying on the cat like he's some great X, Y, or Z. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. just 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 tell the truth. And if he's in cognitive decline, you ain't got to rationalize it and justify it and hide it. Just tell the truth. I mean, everybody goes through cognitive decline if they're blessed enough to live to be 80 some years old. But people don't want to tell the truth. I don't expect yeah. it out against the Trump. Democrats, you would think, would be telling the truth, but even they don't want to tell the truth. Is there a genocide going on in Gaza where 15,000 children have been maimed and murdered and massacred? Tell the truth. Don't deny tell the truth. It. Yeah. Don't enable it. Tell the truth. But if you tell certain truths, as you know, you better get ready for the cross. You're certainly right. You're certainly oh, right. Oh, yes. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world <laughs> go free now? There's a cross for everyone. And there's a cross for me. All yeah. of us have those crosses in our lives. But yeah. the good news is there's somebody there that's going to be with us until the end of the world. Absolutely, absolutely. Help, help us bear that cross with a dignity and a decency and a determination and a perseverance. That's yes. who we are at our best. That's the greatness of Black people. Yes, and, yes. And if we lose that, I don't care how many celebrities and millionaires we produce, it's sounding brass and tinkling cymbal. It's empty. It's vacuous. Yes. Yes, yes. Wow. 
Dr. West, is Project 2025 the truth from those who organized it and wrote it? Is that a truth that perhaps may set forth fear in the minds of our, our people in our country? Is it a truth? Well, it, it's certainly a document of fascism that people who wrote it have in mind of imposing on the country. Okay. And okay. So that, and that's, and it certainly does produce fear because fascism ought to produce fear in people. And by fascism, what I mean is the chronic and systematic violation of rights and liberties with the rule of the powerful and the wealthy and that rule imposing itself in such a way that it is indifferent and callous to the least of these, the poor people and working people. It's all about organized greed and it's yeah. all about weaponizing the fear as you rightly say. And of course, I mean, it's the kind of thing that could, uh, that could, that could lead toward a, uh, a civil war. Because I mean, if, if it were actually imposed there would be such levels of social unrest in the country mm. because it just the policies are just so cold and callous. Now, of course, it's words on paper. It take a it take a whole process to try to translate it into legislation. Right, but right. it is very much a, a neo and crypto fascist vision of, of of the country. No doubt about that. Yeah, yeah. Any closing thoughts, Doctor West? I just want to say that I've just been so thoroughly blessed, uplifted, and buoyed up to be in conversation with you. It's, it's, yeah. it's true. You got an anointment that no one can deny. And it's a beautiful mm. thing. Wow. Very few people have that. Very few people. And when you can root it in this love and this freedom, it means, of course, that you're always going against the grain. Always. Yeah, yeah. So you got to have tough skin and courage that's and have right. it rooted in integrity and truth that's, that's and love. I got it. That's it. it. That's it. <laughs> you already, you already, already got it. You already got it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Right. But I say again, Deacon Thomas and Elder Helen smiling, smiling, smiling. And that's a high standard now. Yes, sir. Thank you. I'm honored. And thank you for being a part of On Point with Wanda Lynn Stokes. Dr. Cornell West, 2024. Thank you so much. We appreciate Indeed. you. God bless you. God and we'll bless. be in touch. Yeah, Indeed. thanks for the We're praying for each other now. That's right. We certainly are. Thank you.